dad was in jail, always either coming out of jail, or when I started the school, everybody seemed to know that my father was in jail. I was in the Marine Corps two years before I realized I had something called a personality. Other people's concepts and how you're not going to fit in no matter where you are. What age do you think you were when you first started drinking? Uh, 16. Hallucinogenic. Oh, LSD. Oh, yeah. That got me into my first treatment program. Doing drugs and guarding these weapons was considered a bad idea. It had become apparent that I was drinking a lot. They say, you're an alcoholic. People are going to hurt you. Here's five bucks. Go get drunk on me. I'd gotten drunk, and I'm riding a motorcycle at night with no headlight. 60 miles an hour down the road, I hit a Jeep 60 miles an hour. You were sober and then went back after 20 years? Are you powerless over alcohol? I mean, do I feel that? Are you an alcoholic? Define powerlessness. Welcome to Time to Heal. We're back on part two of our show where we had Bill with us and he was sharing with us his, his story of how he's been in and out of the program. This show again is we're talking about relapse after long time sobriety and why is it that people keep going in and out of the program that go to meetings, they have a sponsor, uh, they work in the steps. What's the mystery? It's probably baffled a few of you. I have talked to my brother, and he has many times, he's been clean and sober 39 years, have sponsored people that had 10 years, 20 years, and even one man that had almost 30 years that went back out. Also, I want to share with you, this is Brian. Brian is my little friend here. Yeah, that's your name. And he's here, he's the comforter, in case my guest, Bill, gets emotional, because I'm going to be asking him some tough questions today. So let's start off, Bill, and uh, the first question I have for you, during the last show you shared with us the struggle you had as a child and how you never felt fit in because your father was in and out of prison and you didn't feel a part of society. Society. The kids actually come to you and say, I don't want to <coughs> be around you or be your dad's a... Uh, you know, uh, people hurt even when they don't mean to. Uh, an example would be, there's a guy and this guy was always joking with him. And pretty soon the guy that, he, that was receiving the jokes blew up. And the guy said, I don't know what's wrong with him, it was a joke. You see, to him it was funny, but to the guy that was receiving it, it wasn't. Oh, Bill, you know, many times people say, oh, I'm just joking, it's, just it's not joke. funny. Not, yeah, and it's not funny. But they're trying to be honest, actually. Yeah. Well, you gotta you gotta realize it. it's called stuffing emotions. Yeah. Somebody just reached down there and ripped your heart out, and you're going, "Oh yeah, that was funny." Ha ha ha. And that's not what you're feeling at all. So it wasn't funny what they were saying to you. No, it hurt. Was, and of course, you gotta also understand that some of that was my perceptions. You're giving Maybe, them an out. Well, no. Am I giving them an out or? Uh, they talk about fears being real and imagined. With me, 90% of my fears never happen. They all happened up here. Yeah, but wait, well, let's stay on one thing right here, Bill. Okay. What did it feel like when you were being rejected growing up and not having a father? <clears throat> For me, people have asked me, what does it feel like? I don't allow myself that luxury. And do you think maybe there's a connection? Could there be a connection? Just have an open mind for a minute, okay? That because you stuffed those feelings, maybe that's why you keep relapsing? <coughs> sure. I mean, that's... <clears throat> you learned how to, to survive. Sure, you do that. Uh, what, what happens is when you sober up, the first thing you do is you jump up and say, okay, Bill, you're no good piece of garbage. You will never be a good piece of garbage. Where did that and message come from? pretty soon you from? will medicate that. You well, where did the message come from that you're from no me. good? From me. From my uh, past experiences, maybe from what I believe is everybody has two things, learned likes 
and learn dislike. You either learn to like something or you learn to dislike. Feelings <coughs> hurt. And for me, feelings do two things. They hurt you or you receive pleasure from them. So, you know, you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But for me, 90% of it was pain. So if all I feel is pain, I'm going to medicate it. Of course. It was smart of you to learn to do that, too. But let's or stop for a minute. I want to ask you the question again. What did your father, what was the message that your father said to you about you? <clears throat> My father, when I would try to help him or try to love him, he'd say, well, you dummy, you didn't do it right this time. That's, I mean, variations of that through many years. But the message is the same. You'll never be good enough. And the, the kids at school, you weren't good enough? Mm, or Fathers, and you're not, what about mom? <coughs> what did mom say? Um, my mom didn't, uh, she always took a back seat to dad. Okay, so the, uh, my mother tried to love you. My mother actually tried to like show me how to play marbles as a kid. But she's your mother, you okay? So she wasn't emotionally available. Uh, well, obviously she had issues of her own, didn't she? Mm -hmm. So, and with other, with seven other sisters and four brothers, uh, taking time to pick out each one individual mm -hmm. wasn't going to happen in a family that big. Right. That would be hard to show love to all of you all the well, time. Well, how do you do that? I mean, yeah. you got that much, feeding them all is an issue. Okay, so things like, uh, well, you're having a bad day, let's stop and take 20 minutes, it's not going to happen. You don't have that kind of time. And I understand it doesn't change the way my perceptions got uh, built. So you come into the program with this background, feeling less than, <coughs> okay. a father that's never around, a mother that just doesn't get involved at all, and she's real busy with all these kids. You go into the Marines. Now you found a place. You don't have to be anybody. You're just accepted the way you are, and that's wonderful. But something must have been surfacing, so you started using drugs and alcohol. Am I? Okay, I'm, does this sound like well, uh, what happened? And then you okay. started drinking again. Drinking when you first look at it, it's a, so it's called a social outlet. Uh, when my father would have his brothers or people show up, one, what they would do was get booze, get in the car, drive in the countryside, drink beer, and talk about the problems of the world. So I believe that's what you do. You drink, you become, that way you can talk about how the world's, you know, or whatever garbage, you, you're being a part of that deal. Mm -hmm. So for me, drinking was, you go in there, you get booze, you drink, you tell about how the world, the way the world runs, or what I believe it to be. You see, uh, I don't, for me, trying to understand what the world's really about, I didn't come up with that blueprint. I don't think anybody does. Everybody has their own perception. Everybody has, but the thing is, is I'm trying to figure out how do I fit into this world? When I got sober for that 18 or 20 years, mm -hmm. I had kids. Mm -hmm. And my kids, at this particular time, loved me with all their heart. Why? Because I said to myself, you got kids, how do you raise kids? Because I didn't have a clue on how to love. I didn't know what love was or hate. All I knew was the kids needed to be fed. <clears throat> and I was in their life not drinking. So I was in their life all the time. And I never, ever put my kids down for any reason. Why? Because I was always put down. I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. When they say do a four step, which is the way you take an inventory, you say, who am I resentful or angry at? Did you, you do that? No, because I didn't have the right to be angry at anybody. Well, now, where did you get that message? From, what? you're less than. Why can't you be angry at Good your father? Point. Why can't I be angry? Yeah, can you be now? No. Why not? Because I don't have the right to be angry. Who gave you that message? Me. 
What's behind the anger, though? I don't know. I'll tell you what's behind that. Well, no, you give me your perception. You can't tell me that. Well, I'll give you my Good perception. Point, huh? <laughs> okay. Aha! The plot thickens. There's pain. Probably. <laughs> You're not interested. What's the pain? The pain is is uh, an an area like you're trying to get into something. And what I don't do is I don't publicly deal with emotions. When I when somebody cuts me off, instead of me jumping up and say you just hurt me, is I get up and and retract into me. What I do is. What they say in my book is pause when agitated. That pause for me is a way to escape or run. I'm going to hand you Brian for a minute. I don't minute. want Brian. Just for a minute, okay. just in case. <laughs> Do you hear? I hear what you're saying. So what you're saying is you learned how to stuff those feelings. Okay. Right. Which makes sense, and I'm really glad you learned <clears throat> that, or you may not be here today. we got to get rid of that old stuffing feelings. It's not working for you, Billy. You've been in and out, in and out, in and out. You didn't do a fourth step. If you do a fourth step, you're going to write about the anger, which is the pain of being abandoned as a child, not feeling like you're good enough. You're, all that's going to come up. Okay. And that's where we have to trust a higher power, that it's going to come up to heal you, Bill. I understand. I understand, I understand what you're saying, and I agree with it. But am I going to do that? How bad do you want recovery? Uh, recovery, for me, I have experienced recovery for the long term and didn't do that. Mm -hmm. I did relapse, that's a fact. And that, that is, I don't blame anyone for that. But what I have learned in that time is one of the things is, is in a program that I'm in, one of the three pertinent ideas are that God could and would if he were sought. So my pain and the things that I feel inside mm -hmm. are between me, my God. And I take it to God and I get a look at it. Each day when I do that, what I find is he shows me mm -hmm. a way of dealing and I don't have to blow it up or go, well, this is what you, see when somebody tells me this is what you're feeling, I shut them down like now. Mm -hmm. I'm sat there listen to them and smile. Yeah. But you can bet they're, they're, they are immediately mm -hmm. the brick wall. They're there. Yeah. And the re it's not, I'm not trying to belittle them or put them in, the, in a, mm -hmm. uh, any way. But what I will not do is when somebody's taking, to me, that's, that's a threat of aggression. Or I'm about to get hurt. So I, my defensive capabilities are just, okay, just shut off whatever's there. It makes sense, Bill, sure. because totally. it was, that was so painful what you went through growing up that you had to find some way. And it's and it's it's alive. See, I'm very much aware of the fact mm -hmm. that that's alive and well. For me, uh, some time ago, <clears throat> I'd gotten put in jail for the wrong reason, which is a long story. Yeah. <clears throat> and I was only there for like 20 minutes. Time takes to bail out. But when I came out of the jail, what I experienced was something called hurt, okay? As I was walking out, I could feel the hurt. Now, I could have cried, okay? Mm -hmm. And I did feel that, but I couldn't, I could feel the pain and realize it was there. For me to actually experience that feeling you was it. foreign and, mm -hmm. and uh, I did feel it. And, and I don't want to, the, the word is enjoyed it. You see, because it was a, an actual feeling. For me to, I can love somebody with all my heart, <clears throat> but to allow them to, to get into my world can't happen. What's gonna happen if they do? I'm, I fear. No, real what's gonna no. happen when they come well, into your world? How would I know? Well, didn't you Until mention in the last show that you lose everything? Yeah, I do. See, that's that's a that's a fear. That, sure, and the, is it real and does it exist? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I don't have a lot of time because of my age to where I can sit around and have the luxury of trying to analyze it all. No, yeah, we don't you know. want to analyze. We no. want to feel. <clears throat> but what I do, what I do have is for me, mm -hmm. in my time frame, when I feel safe, okay. 
you and me have history. Not nearly enough. Some of the people that I talk to that are my crew friends, I guess, one guy, he doesn't drink, and I've known him 20 years. And for me and him to actually sit down and talk, and knowing that I can tell him anything and not have a reprisal or anything like that. Mm -hmm. it, and I've known him 20 years, and I've only been able to do that for maybe six months. Okay? Why? <clears throat> because it takes my fear. It's easier for me to not have the feelings and to get through the life than it is for me to risk it. But you you get close to it and then you drink again. Uh, no, I get close to it. I run. What gets me to drink is when <clears throat> the reason after 18 or 20 years I went out and to drink was because I did allow her and gave her all my money, mm -hmm. everything I had, all of it, okay? And when I seen that she had other agendas, that hurt. Feeling. I understand that, that that hurt. So she's still alive and why I did not kill her. I did not go down and blow her up. I even went with her on a trip to go see my son, okay? We got on the same plane, we stayed in the same hotel, and she's still alive. Do you with see all the connection that pain, though, Bill? You got hurt? Yeah. I got hurt, I, but I didn't no drink. No feelings? I didn't drink over that, did I? You didn't drink? No, I didn't drink over when we went out, and I, knowing that she hurt me, I allowed her to live. You you, you understand what I'm, okay, when so I'm saying? That the, the feelings that I want to feel, that I want to feel, is because she took all that and she did hurt me, is I want to get even have revenge and all that. I mean, that's what I'd be feeling. But that's not God's plan, is it? That's not what God wants me to do. God doesn't want me to kill her. <clears throat> so even though she did do that hurting, I realized that God wants me to love her unconditionally. What I'm feeling is irrelevant. Even though I'm mad at her and stuff like that, I can't kill her. I can't do that. But what I can do is love her. And in loving her, I will learn to love me. The feelings are going to come and go. I'm going to be happy and joyous and free and all sorts of other things. And I'm going to hurt and I'm going to be afraid of it. But I still know that my higher power is showing me things at my pace. Not yours. Yeah. Not Joe Smuckatelli's or whatever. At mine. And I still feel threatened. My defense mechanism shows up real quick real quick. Yeah, you have a little bit of it going on right now. Oh, yeah. As soon as we start talking about feelings, you <clears throat> just start talking. I start breaking. So slow down for a minute. Can't Deep do breathe. That. I'm, I'm fine. See, I've worked in crisis mm -hmm. all my life. Slow down just for a minute. I want to ask you another question. Okay, so when are we going to make this leap of faith and do the fourth step? <clears throat> or are we? Am I involved in that? I have a sponsor. Has he mentioned it? Uh, being in the Marine Corps, coming up to me and telling me this is the way you should do things, it's kind of hard for him to do. But the deal is, it's my deal. And God's. I'm very much aware of the fact that I need to get into that four step. And I'm trying to do it. Like I said, my issue is, I can't be angry at anybody. So how long before that mm. builds up? And instead of killing people, I go out and drink. So you got a lot of anger that you're afraid to, if it comes up, that you could hurt someone. It's like a little tight ball. It's yeah, it's so like it's tight. ready to explode. If it, um, uh, My emotions and everything are so wound up in yeah. such a tight ball that to risk blowing that or... Right, or, I hear you. It'd be like an atom bomb. You know, the, I had that same feeling. It was like if I let these feelings out, I felt like I would explode <clears throat> or something. It was like, and you're right. It took me until I was like 20 years sober. I, I spent. Sure. Oh, you don't want Brian? You don't you need, need him for emotions? Okay. Well, you can't. <coughs> All right. He's not feeling rejected. I'm good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <Poor> Brian. <laughs> there are some key things in the program. Willingness. Willingness is the key. What is it? How does the program work? Honest. Open mindedness oh, and willingness. So, pray for the willing to be willing is what my sponsor used to tell okay. me. Now, for my own history, I was in and out for four years. 
I had to do a four step because it was missing. I knew there was something in there that I had to get rid of. And it's because it, we hold on to the guilt and the remorse. And it's important that we get rid of that stuff as soon as possible. People wait and wait. And I don't know what they're waiting for. I remember they used to tell me, uh, I would say, when does it get better? And they said, well, when you, if you work the steps, it will get better. And, I, and it was like this hesitant, this fear that I was going to uncover something that I didn't think I was ready to deal with. But remember, your higher power isn't going to have you reveal it to you until you're ready. I was in the 30 years recovery and when some terrible memories came back from my childhood. So he, he didn't have me deal with that in my first five years of recovery. It was a long time to Prior. pray for the willingness. Uh, did you ever get down to the step nine? Did you ever start making Did amends? I make amends? <clears throat> for what? For what? That comes out of the fourth step. Oh. Okay. The fourth step is we write down all our resentments. I know what the fourth step is. Okay. Well, I'm sharing so that okay. other people out there okay. may not know. So, right? Mm -hmm. You know about that. So are we <coughs> resentful at Dad for going to prison and not being there for you? Okay. Are we? Uh, well, I'll have to think about that. I would say yes. See, I would be angry. Yeah. Well, Dad, why didn't you get your act together? You could have been home with me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's me Are we angry that mom wouldn't back you up and be there for you? Okay. Uh, the wife. See, what I'm getting here now mm -hmm. is, I believe, what you're trying to invoke a response from me, and when I... Uh, Something's coming up. Sure. And when it does that, yeah. uh, <coughs> the fencing mode shows up. Well. Mm -hmm. Aren't you mad at your dad? You have the right to be mad at your dad, and you can tell people. No, no, let's not talk about rights. Okay. I'm not talking about a right. You know, your dad yeah. did the best he could too. Okay. I'm not giving him an out. I'm not. Okay. You know, my dad died from alcoholism when I was five years old. He did the best he could. Okay. It's not about him, your dad being a good or a bad person. It's about the little boy that hurt so bad because dad was not there for him. Okay. I'm I, I'm not going to deal with that guy. You don't want to deal with that little boy that was hurting. Yeah, and why don't I want to deal with him? Yeah. Because thanks for asking the question. Because you suggested it. Does that make sense? You see, it's like it, which doesn't. Too painful. Make, yeah, it's like. Uh, <clears throat> it's too painful. I know how to build a thing when some, and I know all the all the bell buttons and both, mm -hmm. but when. And I could probably do it, but when I'm told to, Bill, it wasn't your fault. Well, yeah, and when you you're telling me that, that's the part that makes me uncomfortable. You can walk up to me and call me a low life piece of <laughs> garbage and all that other thing, mm -hmm. but I tell you one of the things you can't do. When you start telling me you love me and you care about mm -hmm. me, I'm out of here. Did you ever see the movie Goodwill Hunting? Yeah. Remember he kept saying it's not your fault. Do you remember yeah. that scene? Did yeah. you identify? No. With that scene when he said, leave me alone, I don't want to talk about this. Yeah. And then finally he broke down and started crying. Sure. See, uh... It wasn't your fault, Bill. When I'm watching a TV, that's on the TV. You know, when mm -hmm. a lot of people tell me it's not my fault, mm -hmm. and I shut that off. And it isn't our fault, remember, Bill. It's our responsibility, though, to work the program, to get well, to, to heal from this that. stuff. Some of it, we have to take responsibility. I say at 12 years old, we are kind of making our own choices. But before that, it had nothing to do with me. My childhood was not my fault. Now, it's my responsibility <coughs> to heal from it. Yeah, carried we, the garbage for 40 years type thing. Yeah. And so, in, and in your case, uh, one other question I want to ask you. What do you think, what are the thoughts that start happening before you take that first drink? Do you remember <coughs> what was going on in your mind? Well... Was everything like okay? Like I say, is feelings start to become alive, okay? Or mm -hmm. the ball that is so tightly rattled up there right. starts to unravel. So it needs some glue or lubricant or mm -hmm. some way to to back off from it for a minute or medicate it. Mm -hmm. That's the best way I can say it is when it starts to, and I'm, because when the feelings show up, I don't have control of what's going to happen. What's so, going to happen, Bill? 
once you start You're feeling. asking me a question that I don't have an answer to. What's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? That's called a fear, isn't it? When you say, are you going what's, to cry? What's going, what's going to happen is a fear. Well, you're a Marine. Sure. Are you going to cry? I might. What's wrong with that? Well, what's right with that? It's much, macho. Men don't cry, right? Don't show their feelings. Well, there's a lot of things like that. The thing is, is what's <laughs> is wrong a, with and what's right is about as irrelevant as it gets. Am I going to, if it comes up and I need to, then I will. Is it okay to cry, Bill? Not in public. Alone? In public. In private, I, uh, interesting, in private I take people apart and, and, and all sorts of stuff, but I don't allow pain to show up there. You just won't let it come up. I will not let it there. It That's hurts okay. too much. And, and I understand, I mean, you yeah. really got to understand that I do understand that, mm -hmm. and I know that if I would let it go yeah. or give it away, that it, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> God could and would if he were sought. And God could what? Fix me. Or heal. Or you. heal. That's a little word now. And so he's going to let that pain come up when it's safe, Bill. Sure, I know that. Yeah. Mm. I had seven years of depression in my first seven years of recovery because I, I couldn't let the feelings come up either. It's too frightening. If I ever showed a feeling as a child, they would have killed me. I remember they used to say, you want something to cry about? I'll give you something to cry about. So I learned very young not to feel any feelings, not to be angry, not to be sad. I remember the children are starving in China, so eat all your food. You know, all this abusive <coughs> stuff. These, And if you hadn't been born, I would be okay. Mm -hmm. Those are the messages I got. Bill. Sure. And Bill, I shouldn't be here. I should be going blah, 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 blah. My mother pulled all the hair out of the back of my head when I was five years old, beat me, left me in a pool of blood. I know the pain. I know the abandonment issues. I do know. I believe you. Raped up until I was 13. Kidnapped and raped. On and on and on. Did it hurt? Oh, God. You still dealing with it? Still dealing with it. Understand that uh, I don't even uh, want to go there. But alcohol is not in my life today. It's not a part of it. It's not okay to be a part of my life. Does that yeah. make sense? Because sure. every time I drink, I, if I did, I'd be saying no to God. We say yes to God when we go to meetings, when we call that sponsor, when we work the fourth step. We're saying yes to God because those steps are meant to align us with God so that we can do His will, so we can feel the joy and the happiness that was taken from us as a child. He wants us to feel that. You know the child that runs and plays and cries and screams and has fun? He wants that. He, he wants us to have that back. He only wants to give <coughs> all the things that were taken away from you back. But He needs our cooperation. He needs our willingness. Sure. To trust somebody, like you said, it's hard to do. And I think the person I know who you're, you're talking about as a sponsor is a really wonderful person you can trust that has walked his own painful <coughs> path and gotten on the other side. And I've walked a very painful path myself. It has not been easy, but I have not done it alone. I have. You have? Sure. I, and I still do. And you still do. And, and that's. Not me trying to say, well, see, um, that is a, you, you, you keep talking about fears and stuff like that. Uh, every, you know, they talk about it, people having fronts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always in a good mood and you've always got jokes and stuff like that. That's all a front. Mm -hmm. um, the real me is, they call it Tweakersville, always looking out the window, you know, mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. Well, that's, that's been me for so long. Yeah. That's like an ingrained in the wood. Yeah. And and understanding that that's the that's what's blocking me off from the sunlight of the spirit. Yeah. Huh. So I have a lot of new concepts or ideas. And you anyway, for me, uh, it kicks. It'll it'll do what it does. You know. I don't know whether I'm going to go with that or. Or what'll happen? Will I call my sponsor when I'm done with this? Probably not. I'll probably go catch a meeting and go see some of my friends, you know, or people acquaintances. And uh, I don't know. My head went blank. I just do I just want you to remember one thing, Bill. What you develop, the ability to not feel those feelings, is a good thing, smart thing. You wouldn't be here. <coughs> 
Honor yourself for that. But now you can trust God and just ask for the willingness and enter in prayer to help you let that go now. You don't need it anymore. Now what he'll do is he'll do it real slow because it's like a cast. I've always explained it like this. If you broke your leg, right, and the great physician knows when to take the cast off. If he took it off too soon, you might fall down, right? He knows when the healing time is ready. So trust that. Say, I'll trust you. You may go another five, ten years not feeling any emotions. You know, he'll protect you as long as you stay willing. The timing will be up to him. It's not going to be up to me or your sponsor, you know, when he's going to pull away those those guards or those safety things that you've hung on to. And, he may, and it may never happen. You may have to drink again. I don't know. I hope not. Oh, I don't think so. I hope not. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to drink again. I could be drunk tonight. Well, I'm not drinking today. You know what I mean? I could say no to God and say this is too much and I'm not going to do it. <coughs> Forget it. It's too painful, right? <laughs> I want to end this uh, today. Thank you so much. Oh, let me give you a hug for coming here. Okay. We're going to do this one day at a time, right? Okay. I want to read this real quick. It's a quick little prayer that I've heard, uh, it's actually like a statement. It says, our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest <coughs> fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are we? you not to be? You are a child of God. You playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people could feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children. We are born to manifest the glory of God within all of us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fears, our presence automatically liberates others. Move your ego out of the way and just, you know, realize that you can't do this alone. I don't do it alone. And give somebody a call right now. And remember, God's still in the business of miracles. So hang in there with me and Billy one more day because your miracle's on its way. I love you, Billy. You are so special. <coughs> Oh my, Bill, Bill, not Billy, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love Billy though, it's my friend. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Sure, we done?